From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Red. Red Wallace, remember? Sure, sure. You run that lunchroom across the street from the warehouse that was robbed last night. Yeah, that's right. Now look, Dollar, suppose I tell you what I know about it. What's going to happen to me? Nothing. As long as you weren't mixed up in it yourself. No, no, no. I mean the papers and the cops. If it gets out I talk to you, I won't last 24 hours. I think I can take care of that. What do you know about it, Red? That depends on what it's worth to you. I see. I'll have to sell out, get away from this section, so I'll need some dough. You follow me? All right. I'll see you taken care of. Now, just what is it no, you No, got... no, I ain't safe. I'm talking from a booth. You stay right there at your hotel. I'll see you in a half hour. Right. Just you. No cops. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Beck. Mr. Beck. Yeah, six quarts of milk and two pounds of butter. Sure, right away. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Beck. Goodbye. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Los Angeles, California... To the home office, Mono Guarantee Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the silver blue matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item four, 20 cents, a phone call to my friend Lieutenant Garcia of the L.A. Police and a call to Queen of the Angels Hospital. Albert Chrisman, the night watchman who was slugged by the gang of teenage hoodlums during the warehouse robbery, was still unconscious. And Chrisman, unless Red Weller was ready to talk now, was the only lead I had toward finding $100,000 worth of silver blue mink coats. I waited two hours and a half for Red Weller, but he didn't show. <laughs> Item five, $2.85, taxi to the warehouse district at the south end of the railroad yards. It was night by now, and the area was almost deserted. A lost, lonely district, shabby and worn, even in the softening darkness, and haunted now by fear. The only lights in the block were those shining from the windows of the warehouse office and from Weller's lunchroom across the street. Good evening. Hello. What would you like, sir? A cup of coffee, I guess. Oh, you're lucky. I just made some fresh. Good. Would you like some cream? No, thanks. No. That'll be fine. Is it foggy out? <sighs> yeah, a little... Not bad, though. Hey, this coffee's all right. You're a good cook. Thanks. The boss always has me make it when I'm here. He says I do it better than he does. I'll bet you do. Is the boss around, by the way? No, he, he called me and said he had to go out. That's why I'm working. I'm on in the daytime, mostly. Do you have any idea where he might be? No. No, he had to go somewhere, I guess. What'd you want to see him about? He wanted to see me. Do you know where he lives? Well, he's got an apartment over on Marina. It's about eight blocks from here. Think he'd be there? No, he, he wasn't going home. He, he was going out somewhere. He, he acted kind of strange. I, I don't know what he was going to do. May I, may I ask just what business you're in? Insurance. Oh. I'm a special investigator. What do you mean? I'm working for the company that insured those furs. The furs that were stolen the night before last from the warehouse across the street. <laughs> Something wrong? Oh, no. No, of course not. I, I, I don't know what you mean. Oh? Can I help you gather up that silverware? Oh, no, no, that's all right. I, gee, I, I, I don't know what happened. Just careless, I guess. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you live around here somewhere? Well, yes, yes, I'm Dalton, uh, three blocks up. What's your name? Carla Palamonte. Why are you asking? How long have you worked here, Carla? About a year. Do many teenagers hang out here? What do you mean? Kids, 17, 18, 19. Do many of them come in here for coffee, hamburgers? Well, sometimes, yeah. I've never noticed much. Know any of them? No, no, no. I don't know any of their names. Are you sure? I don't ask them their names. Did I ask you your it's name? It's Dollar, Johnny Dollar. Well, I still didn't ask you. If you want to tell me your... What are you scared of, Carla? Nothing. I'm not scared. You're not? Of course not. Why would I be scared? For the same reason your boss is, Red Weller. 
He was scared when he talked to me this afternoon, and when he phoned me later. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. That's why he didn't come to my hotel. He was afraid to. And why did you drop that silverware when I told you who I am? Because you're scared half to death. No. What's the matter with you people down here? What are you doing, crawling into a hole because a half-grown gang of hoodlums starts throwing their weight around? You don't understand. Then suppose you tell me about it. Do you think that's any kind of an answer in the long run? To pull the covers up over your eyes and let them do as they please and just keep hoping they'll leave you alone? All you're doing is making things worse. You don't know how it is. You don't have to live here. No, no, I don't have to live here, but I know how it is. Because I've seen it in other places where the mobs manage to take over. And if you let it happen here, then you'll really have something to be scared of. Maybe, maybe they've already taken over. Who? Oh, a bunch of kids with a gripe on, running in packs so they feel safe? Is that the kind of mob you mean, Carla? No. They're not a mob yet, but they will be if they're not stopped. It seems to me you'd have some sense of responsibility to them, if nobody else. Maybe if other people had a sense of responsibility, kids wouldn't have to grow up in a place like this. Have you ever thought of that, Mr. Dollar? Yeah, yeah, I've thought of it. But it doesn't hold water. And you'd think so if you lived here. All right, so it's a slum district. And sure, these kids start out with a strike on them. But that's a pretty weak excuse for joining up at criminal bands and terrorizing a whole neighborhood. For slugging people and looting warehouses. Yes, yes, I know. Most of them find other answers. It's only a small minority that turns to crime. But if you let them get away with it, others will join them and they'll grow until finally it's too late. Well, Carla, still nothing to tell me? I can't. I just can't. I see. Well, there's a quarter for the coffee. Keep the change. Good night, Carla. Wait. Yeah? Mr. Dollar, suppose... Suppose I, I knew someone who, who might be able to help you. I mean, I mean, who might know something about the robbery. Innocently, of course. Uh, if you talk to this person and, uh, and they agree to help you, could you... Well, could you keep them out of it? it depends on the circumstances. I do all I could, that much I promise. I don't know. I'm not sure. You're not sure of what? Of you. Why, oh, I know better when I stop and think, but I've lived in this neighborhood too long. Lived with these people and... and... I'm bound by the law like any other citizen. And I won't break it to help somebody cover up a criminal act. But I figure it's up to me sometimes to decide whether a thing is a criminal act. And if a person seems to deserve it, well, I can be pretty lenient. You promise? What you just said? Yes, I promise. I've got to trust you. I've got to trust someone. Do you know such a person, Carla? Yes. Do you know where to find them? I think so. Well, I'm sure they'll be at one of two or three places. Not very far from here. And who is this person? Someone who grew up around here. A boy, 19. What boy? My brother. Expense account item seven, $2.70, taxi. We went first to Carla's apartment where she lived with her brother, but there was no one there. Then we checked out a drive-in a few blocks away, a teenage hangout. No luck. Finally, we tried a pool hall down south of the yards, just off Alameda Street. It was our last hope. I know he comes here. It's not a good place for him, but a lot of the other kids do, too. And he wants to belong. Yeah, sure. Everybody does, in one way or another. Oh, gosh, it'd have been different if our folks had lived, but well, our boy just won't take orders from his sister. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. Thanks. Gosh, let's see. Well, if he's not here, then I just don't know where he... Oh, wait. There he is. Down near the corner. The one with the dark, curly hair. All right, come on. Take it easy. Just tell him I'm a friend of yours and you want to talk to him. We'll get him off to one side. Well, whatever you say. Eddie! Yeah? Well, for the... What are you doing here, Carla? Eddie, Eddie, this is Mr. Dollar, a friend of mine. We were... I wonder if we could talk to you for a moment. What about? 
Well, you just... know better than to come in a joint like this. But I want to talk to you, Eddie. Well, you can talk to me at home. Now, go on, get her out of here, will you, mister? It might be a good idea if you listen to her first. I thought it was her that wanted to talk to me. Go on, get her out of here. All right, if you'll go with us. What for? I like it here. It's a nice place. Yeah? At least it's better than San Quentin. What are you talking about? A warehouse robbery, $100,000 worth of furs. I understand you may know something about it. Innocently, of course. I thought you said this guy was a friend of yours. Well, that's right, Eddie. He's just... Who is he? He's an insurance investigator. Oh, so that's the pitch. He's promised to help, Eddie. If, if you'll tell him whatever you know, he'll protect Knock you. Knock it off, get... Carla. Now, look, mister. I don't know nothing about nothing. I never even heard of no fur robbery. So take her with you and get out of here. This may be your last chance to get off before the boat sinks, Eddie. You're not leaving, huh? All right, then I'll leave. Eddie! Let him go. We can't force him to talk. I don't know, Mr. Dollar. I don't understand him. I do. I had to make ten cents phone call from the pool hall to Lieutenant Garcia at police headquarters. He said there was no change in Albert Chrisman's condition yet. He was still holding on, and he still hadn't talked. But there had been another new development, a big one. And when I joined Kyle in the taxi outside, she knew it by the look on my face. What's wrong, Mr. Dollar? Now, look. How sure are you that your brother wasn't mixed up in that robbery? Well, I... I want the truth. I... I'm afraid he was mixed up in it. Then brace yourself, Carla. Your boss, Red Weller, who was going to tell me what he knew about it, was found murdered in an alley an hour ago. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a lonely, broken-hearted girl, a blood-stained shirt, and a fight with a cornered rat. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar.